Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Coder. This week we're going to do part 7 of our 2048 tutorial. And uh, we're going to start right from where we left off, of course, uh, with our previous tutorial being part 6. And uh, part 6 basically was just the, uh, the game over portion of the game, right? So, now we want to be a little more visual. We want to see our score. We want to see our hard work paying off. So, the good thing is, is that uh, we already took care of building most of the HUD in our first part of the, well, the very first uh, video that I did for this series. And um, so that's going to help us out now because uh, we have less work to do. So most of the work that we're going to do is going to be in the script. So let's go ahead and open up our game class. And in our game class, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use another namespace. So we're going to be using Unity Engine UI because we need to use the UI components for displaying on our HUD. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to create a few more variables. Uh, we actually are going to need a canvas variable to hold our uh, game over canvas. So we'll just call this game over canvas to keep things simple. And we're going to need another one that is going to be for our game score. We're going to just call this game score text. And that's going to be of type text. And finally, we are going to need something to keep track of our score. So that's just going to be a variable, an integer variable, and we're going to set that equal to zero. Okay. So. The first thing we need to do actually is we need to create a method to actually you know what the first thing we're going to do is so that we don't uh, we don't forget is let's go down here and have a look at our update method so if you'll remember from the next video or next <laughs> if you'll remember from the last video uh, the if not check game over, okay? If not check game over, meaning that it's returning a false, then we're going to check user input, all right? But if it is game over, we want to show our game over HUD. And that's just going to be game over canvas uh, dot game object dot set active to true. Oops. Okay, so basically what's, what that's going to do is because, uh, we remember we created the game over canvas way, way back in the very first uh, video, we created that canvas and then we disabled it. We disabled the game object. So all we're doing here is, is that when we have a game over event, we are setting our uh, game over canvas game object to be true. So it now enables it and now we can see it. So the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a method and we'll create it just beneath the check user input method and we're going to call this one update score it's not going to return anything all it's going to do is just going to update our score so we're going to say game score text dot text equals score dot to string and we're going to actually pass in a format of the string that we want. So we're going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think that's how many zeros I'm using. Let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So that's how many zeros we're using. And <laughs> the funny thing about this is, is that, well, it's not really funny. It's serious. Really what we're doing is... Uh, I'm showing you guys how to have some leading zeros before your score. So that's just kind of like a retro thing. Um, you know, you just, you wanna see uh, the zeros before the score. So like what'll happen here is, is if we get a score of one, a one will show up at the very right side of the, uh, um, right side of the string there. And the rest of the zeros will show up as well. If we didn't do that, what would happen is if we like if we left this blank like if we just took this out what would happen is is the score on our uh, HUD would just equal 
the score integer uh, value. So if our score is one, it would just equal one. There would be no leading zeros. Um, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we are going to want to actually increment our score variable. So right now our score variable, if you look back up here uh, where our variables are defined is zero. Um, so that's going to be really, really boring because that's all we'll ever see because we're not incrementing it anywhere. But where would we increment our score? Well, let's see. What do we want to get points for? We don't want to get points for moving the tiles around. That's just lame. There's no, anybody can do that. You just click a couple buttons and the tiles start moving around. We want to get scored or we want to, we want to get a point or points for merging tiles. So in our check and combine tiles method, okay, where we're checking to see, hey, can we combine these tiles? Remember this one? We did this a couple tutorials back. We're checking to see if we can merge two tiles. If we can, right, we're in this big if statement. If we can do this, then we create a new tile. And since we're creating a new tile, you know, why not, why not, actually upgrade our score, right? Why not Why not give us some points? So the easiest way to do this is we just take our score variable and we say plus equals, right? And we do moving tile. Uh, we just do moving tile value and times that by two, right? So if the moving tile value is two and it's merging with a two, we're timesing it by two, which means that we're going to get the score equal to our new tile. So if we're merging two fours, we're gonna get a score of eight. And because we're using plus equals, meaning that we're incrementing what the current value is of score, we're adding to score, whatever the value currently is to what the new value is. So if the, if the current value is eight and we're merging two fours, we're gonna do four times two is eight, and then we're going to add eight to eight and we're gonna get 16. So that's gonna be our new score. So, What'll happen is our new score, if you'll look back on the method that we created called right here, update score, we're taking game score text dot text, so the text property, and we're setting that equal to score to string with this format here. So we're taking the score integer at whatever its current value is and we're, and we're setting that to text. So we need to call this update score method. Um, we can call this update score method at every frame, which is fine. So we could just go up here and put this in the update method. But honestly, the only time that our score is gonna change for now until we add some other crazy parameter is right when we actually change the score variable. So we can just call update score from our check and combine tiles method. So right here, when we're setting the score, right after we set the score, we'll just call update score. So then that'll actually update the visual aspect of our score so that we can see what that looks like. So since we have that bit done, um, let's go ahead and go to Unity and just, because we, we still have to add the, um, the game objects to the properties of the class that we just created. So if we go back to our grid, you'll see that over here we have new properties. We've got a game over canvas and we've got a game score text object. So let's go ahead and drag our game over canvas into that property. And then let's go ahead and expand our HUD canvas and then you'll see we've got the HUD score text. And if you double click on that, you'll see that that is what we're looking for. That is what we need, all right? So we'll grab that. Oops, we can't do that like that. <laughs> we have to click back on grid first, all right? So we'll grab the HUD score text game object and we're just gonna drag that to our game score text object or uh, property. All right, so now let's uh, double click back on our background so that we can see that and let's click play. So at this point, we should be able to get a score if we merge two tiles. So these two aren't gonna merge and this is also not gonna merge, but 
If I press left now, we're going to get a merge, which should result in a score four. And there we go. And then our score should be, let's see, four times two is eight plus four is 12. And then we've got to get another four, which will give us 16. And then another four, which will give us 20. And on and on we go. And there you can see our score is counting up. Awesome, right? So we got that part of the HUD completed. So let's also check to see if we can get a game over so we can get our actual game over to display. This is always the fun part here. Dun, dun. Ah, game over, look at that. And also notice I'm still pressing the keys and our player pressed key uh, debug is showing us that we're not pressing anything. And in other words, it's showing us the last key we pressed, which was left. Uh, game over, it's telling us it's true. And uh, our game over HUD canvas is displayed um, so we can see game over and the play again button. But our play again button doesn't work. <laughs> So, guess what? That's going to be the next thing we're going to fix. So let's go back into the game class. And we are going to find our play again method that I'm sure we created. Play again. There we go. It's at the very, very bottom. Should have known that. All right. So we're going to scroll to the very, very bottom of our uh, class here. And the only thing we have in here right now is we are doing grid equals new transform grid width grid height. So basically we are resetting our grid. But what else do we want to do when we press play again? We want our score to be reset to zero. So score equals zero. And we also want to create, uh, we also want to iterate and go over the entire grid and basically blank out everything. So, to do that, let's create a list of type game object. I'll explain this in a second. We're going to call this children. And we're going to say new list game object. All right. And then we're going to go for each. Oops. Transform T in transform. Uh, children man I can't spell children dot add so we're adding to the list t dot game object and then we're saying uh, children for each t T, just let me write the word, freaking letter T. T, destroy immediate. Um, T. And then, game over canvas. Dot game object dot set active equals false. And generate new tile two. Okay. So what are we doing? Well, we are creating a list of children. We are then taking a for each loop and we're iterating over all of the children in the transform. And from there, we are adding that to the children list. And then we are taking that and we're creating another for each and we're destroying immediate all the transforms that are stored in each of these children. We are then taking the game over canvas and we're basically setting it to false uh, or setting its active property to false so that it hides itself. And then we're generating two new tiles because the game is restarted. Our score is zero and we are ready to play again. So let's see if we can actually get that to work. Um, if we press play, we can test. We can test. Oops. Just 
gonna try to do this really, really quickly. There we go, game over. All right, so now if we press play again, our score should reset to zero, but there is a thing that you're gonna see that's going to be weird. Um, so we're gonna press play again. The game over text should, dis or should disappear, the play again button should disappear, the tiles should disappear, and we should be ready to play again. All right, perfect. But our score didn't reset. It's 292, but wait. We reset our score to zero, didn't we? We did, but remember we're only calling update score after we combine tiles. So we have to call update score after we reset the score to zero, but before we restart the game. So once we actually merge two tiles, our score will be four. There. All right, so let's fix that really quick. Let's go to game. And just before we generate the two new tiles, we could just say update score. And that should take care of that. Let's go back to Unity, press play. And let's get another game over. There we go, game over. <laughs> and now when we play again, our score should reset to zero. There we go. All right, so the other thing is, is that uh, we can, uh, or let's see here. Yeah, I'll save that for another time. We'll, we'll do a video called Extras and I'll show you some other cool things that we can do. Um, but uh, for now, this is the end of the video. Uh, I don't wanna make it too long. My videos have a uh, are known to be at least like 30 minutes long. I'm trying to change that to make them a little shorter and uh, quicker to follow and not so, you know, I don't know. Not so long, I guess, because it can be a lot of information. Um, anyways, so if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, comments go down below. If you like the channel, subscribe. If you want to see more great videos, subscribe. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, subscribe and click the bell after you subscribe because that's the important part because otherwise you just won't get notifications. Invite your friends, invite your family, invite anybody you think needs to learn how to code and create games. Uh, oh, I'm working on something and uh, it's gonna be really cool. I'll probably announce it in my next video, and uh, well, we'll see where that goes. So I'll see you guys next time.